Welcome back. All right, so I feel like there shouldn't be a Red Wings logo on this board. Uh, I put the Red Wings logo on this board, and then I, I dove into internet research mode, and I'm not sure that the Detroit Red Wings logo is suitable. Jacob Vrana. <clears throat> so everybody was caught off guard. We knew that Fabry's coming back. Somebody has to be waived for Detroit. They have waived uh, Vrana. Now, this may be part, part of the reason. may not be the whole reason. They may have wanted to keep Vrana in Grand Rapids because he's come back out of the player assistance program, and so they may want to keep him in Grand Rapids. It's possible Vrana didn't like that idea. He has removed all Red Wings content from his Instagram. He's removed it from his Twitter as well. Um, so any posts he made from Detroit are, are gone. So that is a big telling thing that something's going on here. Uh, now keep in mind, I've seen a lot of posts of, oh, this GM needs to go out and get him. Go get him. Go get him. He's going he's gonna to be great. He's a big goal scorer. But there, there are some asterisks with this. First off is this cap hit, $5.25 million through this season and next season. So that's going to ward off about half the league. About half the league is going to look at that and say, we can't justify going out and bringing in Vrana. And then there's the recently completed the Players Assistant Program part of it, where we don't know why he was in the Assistance Program. And again, players should get that help when they need it, right? Um but you look at what's going on with him removing everything off of, of his social media related to the Red Wings. This never ends well. This is not something that usually ends with a player restoring all those and, and coming back and everything being fine. So I think his time as a Red Wing is done. Now, I, I would imagine that that means he probably doesn't stay with Grand Rapids either. Uh, but let's go through this. Over the last three seasons, only Austin Matthews scores better 5-on-5 five five when it comes to goals. Per 60 minutes, Vrana's right there with Matthews. Now, I always sort of use that as like a qualifier. I remember when Brett Connolly had really good scoring per 60 minutes, and I said it's how they're deployed. Now, Vrana is not the same. I'm not saying that's the same at all. But I think with Vrana, to basically say he's the best goal scorer, which some seem to think that is... He's a good goal scorer. I think he's capable of 25, 30 goals. I also think he's been used properly. So when I see a guy who's getting really good goal numbers per 60 minutes played, I say to myself two things. One, good for him. And two, he's being utilized well. Coaches are utilizing him well. Uh, and I think that's the case with Vrana. I do think he's a good goal scorer. But let's look at the last two seasons. Last year, he only played 26 games. 13 goals, 6 assists, 9 points. So for all of those armchair GMs that are saying, we need to pick this guy up, a lot of them, I think, are the same people who thought Seattle should have picked up Carey Price in the expansion draft and said they were fools for not taking Carey Price. Who cares about the knee, knee reports? Uh, with Rana, you have this double whammy, right, where he's come out of the assistance program. He also is a player who gets hurt a lot. He's played two games this year, one goal, one assist, two points. At the AHL level, no points for Grand Rapids in three games, and he's a minus five. So his numbers have not been good this, this past couple of years in terms of being healthy. And he's kind of trending in the wrong direction there, too. And so I, I think there's a lot more going on here. I think there's been a major falling out between himself and the organization. And keep in mind, other GMs would see that. Other GMs would see that. If, if this is about him being sent to the AHL and them saying, we think you need more time in the American Hockey League and him being mad about that, if that's what it is, other GMs would see this and say, okay, so what if I need to put him in the minors for some reason? What if, what if he's having a hard time and we have to demote him? Are we going to have an issue, right? So I know there will be a lot of fans that think that Steve Eiserman's crazy. Steve eiserman has been a GM long enough that I can't see him making a move out of some irrational, um, for some irrational reason. I think Vrana was placed on waivers, A, because of the cap hit, that wards off half the league, and B, I think there's something else going on here that we could find out about over the next, over the coming hours. Uh, one of the reasons this video is a little bit later than when I planned on doing this isn't just because of the last video that I did. It's because I wanted to wait and see if anything came out. I was honestly waiting for Friedman or Merrick or somebody to come out and say, hey, there's been a breakdown in communication in Detroit. Here's what's going on. And I think that's what's gone on. I, I do. I don't have inside information. I'm just looking at a player doesn't... A player won't normally decide I'm going to remove all mentions of a team 
when they're going to stay with the team, right? <clears throat> I, I follow wrestling. One of the things you look for in rest, with a wrestler, if their contract's going to be up with one company, whether or not they're going to move, is what their social media does. So when they start changing their name, when they start uh, changing the way that they, they interact with people, you're saying, you know what, they're probably done with WWE, they might be headed somewhere else. Or they're done with AEW, they're headed somewhere else. And I think with sports, I think there's there's likely been cases with other, other leagues too. I'm just using that as an example. But I, I think we're going to find out in the coming days more about this story. The reason I'm not wearing a Red Wings jersey is because I, I didn't feel like, <laughs> at this point, Jacob Branna doesn't feel like he is a member of the Red Wings. Um, I would award Grand Rapids, but... He only played three games there, had the minus five. And I think there's something else going on here. So I, I think there's a lot of people rushing to judgment that, oh, this is terrible. And I, I always find it interesting when a player gets waived that immediately you will see fans going by name recognition and saying that player has to be picked up by GMs immediately. I don't think he gets picked up on waivers. And I, I also, in seeing this and all of this, and again, this is pure speculation on my part, this feels like they're going to move to con contract termination. That's what it feels like. We When we see this kind of a break and, and a guy get waived out of nowhere, 24 hours later, they can put him on unconditional waivers to buy out his contract. And that's what it feels like. Now, whether or not we see that happen, um, like if he passes through waivers... And nobody picks him up. I think that's what Detroit does. That's just me, just off the cuff, just saying. And so we'll see. But uh, there's there's definitely something that's gone on here. And it's it's more than just Fabry being back. Fabry being back may have forced their hand. But there's only a certain period of time you can keep a guy in the minors unless you've waived him and you've actually assigned him to the AHL. And that may be what we're seeing here. So... I'm willing to give Iserman the benefit of the doubt because Iserman has proven himself to be an excellent GM over the years. I like Jacob Vrana. I think he's a very good player. This is a league where we've seen very good players uh, find their way out of the league over a short period of time. Um, that might be what we're looking at here. And again, with that $5.25 million, what we could see happen, so again, I'm, I'm already down the rabbit hole. We might as well go a little further. So there's the possibility. Let's say that nobody picks him up on waivers. The Detroit Red Wings put him on unconditional waivers to buy him out tomorrow. They say, no, we're, we're buying him out. vrana has gone. We could then see a team like Washington. One thing, if you look at his follower follows, who he follows on social media, a lot of it's still Washington Capitals related. We could see the Capitals then go out and pick him up on a, on a dime. They could go out and pick him up for a contract worth a million dollars or 750 grand. Um, that's, that's a possibility, right? That you, you let that contract get bought out. You let Detroit deal with that, and then you swoop in, talk to his agent, talk to the player, and you bring him in. And it might be the best thing for him. Um, and and then, you you know, we can get into the whole who won the trade and who didn't win the trade. and How now the Washington Capitals definitely win the trade with Mantha. But we didn't see this coming at the time, so it's hard to to make that, make that evaluation right now until we know exactly what's going on. But there's more to this than just him being placed on waivers. And if you're of the mind that, well, my GM's got to go out and get him, remember his injury history, remember his cap situation, and it's not that simple. So if he was a guy who was healthy all the time, I'd be saying, yep, go ahead, jump on it. But he does have a lot of injury problems in his recent history, and so we'll see what happens. Where does he end up? Question I ask you, does he find another job in the National Hockey League? Does he head over to Europe? What do you think is going to end up happening with Jacob Brana? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.